So basically, here's how it works, and please like the video for my drawings. <laughs> Alright, so up top here uh, is a normal O2 sensor circuit, uh, circuit response, I guess you call it. The orangey one is the upstream, 
uh, the one before the cat, uh, this one is always constantly switching between, uh, I think it's like 0.2 and 0.8 volts or something like that. And then the blue one here is the downstream, which is the one uh, after the cat. And this is what it should look like. Uh, the upstream one is going to be constantly switching back and forth. Uh, this is it basically just reading, reading data coming out of uh, your exhaust pipes, I guess. <laughs> um, and then uh, the downstream one, uh, if your cat is working properly, or if your cat is there, like it's supposed to, um, the, the downstream O2 sensor is just going to have a constant reading here, uh, which just indicates that it's working correctly. Um, now, if your cat is not working properly, or if you just have no cat, this is what the graph will look like. Your upstream O2 sensor is going to still be switching back and forth like it should be, but your downstream O2 sensor is going to be switching back and forth uh, with it, pretty much. So... Uh, under normal operations, the downstream O2 sensor is just going to be a flat line up here at a higher frequency. And down here, if it's not working, uh, your downstream O2 sensor is going to be switching between a high and a low frequency. And that's important to understand because what the O2, the MIL, MIL limiter does is basically just get rid of those low frequencies and tricks it into thinking it's working. So let me just pull up here. Um, hopefully you can see this. So this is an O2 sensor diagram. And I'm pretty sure it's universal between like, every make and model, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, I probably am. I definitely don't know really what I'm talking about that much. But I do know how electrical circuits work. So. Uh, this is your O2 sensor right here on this end. So this is the thing that actually goes into the pipe. And then here's the plug that plugs into your wiring harness right here. Um, so <clears throat> the only thing that you need to trick your O2 sensor into thinking it's working is two components that are very cheap. And all you have to do is splice them in or solder, solder them in, whatever. And it'll just work. Um, so this circuit here, this, this right here is a capacitor. And this right here is a resistor. Uh, it's called an RC circuit. And when it's in this particular configuration, it creates what's called a high pass filter. Um, and what that does basically is it filters out the low frequencies and only passes the high frequency. So if you remember that graph there, it will filter out the low frequencies, these ones that aren't supposed to be here, and only leave the high ones. Um, go back to... That's all it does. You just cut two wires, and you put these components in between, the gray wire and the black wire. And so one meg resistor and a single microfarad uh, capacitor. And I'm actually going to show these in a minute here. Um, I'm gonna, going to uh, try to explain more exactly what this does uh, to filter. Um, so basically this is a... <laughs> I know this is really good. Um, this is a what a high pass filter looks like. Um well the, the like the frequency response of one. So basically when the cir the circuit starts, the frequency goes higher and higher and higher until it like plateaus. It evens out right here. Um so what this uh high pass filter does in this O2 sensor is it picks a frequency that we need to filter out. So that and that's the critical frequency or FC, and that is found by one over two pi times R times C. And in this case, uh, one over two pi times one mega ohm times one microfarad is about zero point one five nine two three six hertz. So if you were to go, if you were looking at this again, and I could probably have made this better and put some actual numbers in here, um, but this blue line right here. That is working at about 
0.015923.6 hertz, whatever it is. So, okay, you take the cat out, now you got this. Well, now you could buy these two little components, splice them into your O2 sensor, like this diagram shows. Very simple, I mean, it would take like maybe two minutes once you have the O2 sensor out. It'll go back to this. That is with the filter. 0 0.15936 hertz or whatever it was. Straight line. And now your check engine light will go off and your car will work like how it's supposed to. And let's see, what else do I have up here that I could show you? So, this is a website where you could buy the components here. And I just want to show you the price of these components. For the capacitor, one of these capacitors is 46 cents. One of those resistors. 26 cents. There you go. 26 cents. Uh, so if you have two cats and you have two downstream O2 sensors, that's like a dollar fifty maybe plus shipping. And the thing about these things is they fail eventually. So I mean, you might as well just buy a couple. <laughs> They're so cheap. And then what else do I got here? Oh uh, yeah, and this is just a, another diagram of the catalytic converter working like how it should and how it shouldn't. Uh, and I think that's really all I got for you. And that's how it works. It's actually kind of simple. And like, uh, if you could do it for a dollar fifty. <laughs> yeah, I just bought these. So, I mean, you could spend 50 bucks on American Muscle. Or you could spend 50 bucks on uh, LMR. I mean, granted, these will probably be much better than splicing in the components yourself, but I mean, they're more or less the same thing. These are just professionally made. And um, I'm probably going to actually show you the one that I bought that failed. Um, just to show you that it's literally all it is. It's just a little extension with a resistor and a capacitor in it to get the waveform how it should be. That's all, really all it is. So, yeah, I guess that's uh, all I got for you. Um, thumbs up the video, man. Do it right now. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. Peace. <laughs>in the Mustang, <clears throat> this is the actual uh, MIL eliminator that I had that went bad on me. Um, and it went bad because as you can see the wire detached from the uh, 1 mega ohm resistor there. Um, but yeah, it's all it is. This is just a little extension with some wire in between and this one microfarad capacitor. See right there, maybe it says one microfarad. Maybe you can see it. And the one meg uh, resistor, which is brown, black, green. That's one meg. <clears throat> and that's all it is. So you can take your stock O2 sensor and just splice these two components into there and have the same result. Might as well, too, if they're just going to break on you. I mean, looking at this now, I realize I could probably just repair this one. But why do why spend $50 if you're just going to have to do all the work anyways? <laughs> so, yeah, that's what it looks like. 
and I'm filming this backwards, so I'm going to film <clears throat> the part that you just watched right now. 